Hey guys, what's up? Tizar here, and welcome to the Road to All-Star Battle. Where we take a look at all the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure games leading up to the end of August when All-Star Battle finally comes out, and we cover the hell out of that. And we're starting with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Phantom Blood, otherwise known as... JoJo no Kimyo na Boken, Phantom Blood. Yes. So it's a PlayStation 2 game. Only released in Japan, it came out for the 20th anniversary of the manga, along with the Phantom Blood film that never saw the light of day, due to like bad test results and not even the creator liked the outcome in the end. Only a short portion was leaked online, and the rest is in vaults, never to be seen again. Sad, the dream is dead, but you can relive what could have been in game form, right here. Yeah, at least. So the first cutscene takes you right back to like ancient Mexico, with crazy Aztecs, of course. Where it gives you backstory and shows the relevance of the stone masks. Example of one being worn by a murderous friend here, and the sacrifice he's doing to this woman. Not sure why it's always a woman in these things, but I'm not complaining. As you can see. If the blood makes contact with the mask, spikes will shoot out the back. And if he's wearing it, of course, it's going to penetrate the back of his head, which somehow turns him into an immortal vampire. Don't question it, just, just go with it. And it's actually relevant, a game character wise, as we don't hang out in this time period too much. But the masks play a huge part. Especially in part 2 of the manga, which is called Battle Tendency. Which doesn't have a game sadly, but it recently just got an anime which covered the whole thing. It was brilliant. You should watch it. Funny enough, that crowd that's cheering him on. You have to fight all of them in like an extra battle in the game's bonus mode. I'm not sure if I'm going to record that though, because it doesn't really add anything to the game. Unless you really want to see that for some strange reason. It is funny to look at, I guess. But don't worry, this is all leading to something. Something glorious. Something fabulous. Something JoJo's. Okay, now we're on to the actual starting point now. And you'll notice the comic book page like animations that dictate the story. They actually carry on throughout the whole story mode, so you may get used to them. They're pretty cool though. Add a lot of detail in. So yeah, Phantom Blood. Takes place in England in the late 1800s. This sick old man is Dario Brando. Not only is he physically sick, he's kind of a sick person in general. It's like he's a bit of a scumbag to everyone. Including his wife and son. His son, you can see there. His name's actually Dio Brando. And if you're a JoJo's fan, I would imagine you'd recognize that face and the name. And the appearance, somewhat, is the same as well. Not the voice, though, as everyone in this game is voiced by different people than the anime. I think they might be voiced by the people that were going to be doing the movie, but that didn't pan out, so. No, Dio isn't the biggest fan of his father, and he wouldn't be if he mistreated you for years. He's uh, explaining another backstory, you get a lot of that, and it's to do with how we forever connect him with the Joe Star family. And the letter he's carrying is a favour left from the Joe Star family after Dario apparently saves the father and son from a crash carriage. It's a carriage now. See another flashback. 
So this crash carriage, the mother dies holding the baby and George Joestar, who mistakes Dario for saving him, when he was actually going to rob the corpses for anything valuable, like a scumbag. But Dario goes along with it and he's given like reward money and to start a hotel chain which fails miserably. And the letter is a favour saying if something happened to Dario, Dio could live with the Joe Stars. We were pretty wealthy. And a stone mask was also in the carriage as well, in the box, which you know, ties it in, ties it all in, kind of. This is all straight from the manga and it's featured in the anime in quite good detail as well. I dedicated a whole scene to it, so just like a little flashback. And he had a bonus scene where it shown him in a prison as well. Like Joe start bailing him out. You know he didn't have to and he blatantly stole from him. He still because he felt bad for him, like pity. Yeah, back to the letter. <laughs> and Dio's gonna be given a better life of this, obviously. To become a success. Though in true Dio fashion, he's not gonna be very grateful at all. Just the way he is. He's pretty much on his dying breath now. That expression doesn't care. So a little time's passed now, and so's Dario, by the look of it. Dio's still not very happy with him. It's quite evil there. Yeah, he still resents him. And I think he actually spits on his grave, I'm not sure you'll see it as it's all still frames and that. I'm not sure actually. So basically, he's going to live with the Joe Stars nonetheless and take advantage of them as much as he can. <laughs> That's the sound of it for it, at least. Okay, cut into a brighter scenery now, but not really a pleasant time. We got two random bullies taking a girl's doll, by the looks of it. God knows what they want that for, what they're going to do with it. But, you know, oh well. Look pretty creepy ass looking dudes. Yeah. It's got them pretty smiles, man. <laughs> it's sad but true. It's not very nice. Oh no. <sighs> so many scumbag moments already. Oh, here he is. It's our main protagonist and gentleman. So as you can see, this is Jonathan Joestar, who will be playing for most of the game. And he's the son from the crash carriage that was mentioned earlier. And that expression looks like he wants to kick some ass. Okay, the commands at the side are very simple. There's like a few combos and a roll feature. It gets a little more advanced as the game progresses, but expect like really plain, boring fights. Kind of teach us the game like a tutorial. And no special moves, sadly. So expect a lot of uh, square, square, triangle, or square, 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 or so forth. And we're fighting two bullies. It's not the most difficult of challenges. You know, as a gent, as a gentleman, who will rise to the occasion. Okay, 
Here we go. Ouch. Not a good start. Okay, so the action parts of the game, they're all brawler sections. So it's going to bounce from story, fight, story, fight, etc. You know. And sadly, like, the game really suffers from a terrible camera angle, as you can see. And you'll spend most of the time trying to focus in the area that your opponent's in. And it has to be like manually, so not doing it automatically, that's all manually locked every time by pressing the L2. Like when I'm in, when I'm in facing the direction of them. And always the camera just goes all over the place while you're punching, it's not good. So pretty much try to do a punching combo, like your square square triangle. You've knocked them down, you've got to kind of turn around, L2, face the other, and repeat. We'll try and get them both like me then. It's not working. Uh, L1 is the block button, which you've got to rely on a lot, as much as possible really, to avoid getting knocked over continuously. Because it's so cheap at times. So yeah, L1 is your friend. And it takes so long to beat these dudes, and everyone in this game, because uh, their health gradually regenerates over time. Like crazy. Uh, the green bars next to their pictures at the top. You know, green is healthy, red is dead. Oh, there's one down. And uh, Mons also recovers, so it's not all bad, the recovering. And my life bar is in the top left corner. Same colour scheme, same stuff. Uh, there's also a beat text, a number, at the right side, which basically displays your combo. So if you keep getting hit without getting knocked down, or taking too long to hit them again, you can rack up some really high numbers. And the higher the number, you increase is your score at the end. And they're both down, yes. A rank, that's not bad. S is the best score. And then it goes from A to F depending on how good you are. And the real bad thing about this is that despite beating the crap out of both of them, I'm still gonna get beaten up in the end. You're due to cannon. It's sad. But you gotta win the fight either way uh, to progress. But some future fights are optional, like whether you win or lose, it still progresses. We'll get to them later on. So they found out that I'm Jonathan Joestar. And they're just going to beat me up for being rich. Yeah, bad times, man. See, now they're pissed. Ah. I hate these guys. It's not a good look. And they just go. <laughs> well, at least I stopped them from bullying a girl, I guess. It's day one though, remember guys. You start off getting dolls for girls and eventually you're saving the world. Sorry, Rolls. He's a gentleman though, through and through, as you can see. And you never know, these, these two might run into each other again. Not the bullies, uh, Jonathan and this girl might run into each other again someday. You never know, you know? But that's looking like the tutorial's wrapped up now, like teaching you the moves. I won't go into it every time unless we get a new set of moves. I will note the game has a lot of time skips, so expect like advanced aging, and it moves at really fast paces at times. Just letting you know. Then she takes my handkerchief. What a bitch.